Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. So exciting times for us EOS R5 users. There are potentially some firmware updates on the horizon. Canon Rumors just listed seven firmware updates that are potentially coming to the EOS R5 and they're pretty exciting. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about those seven, but I'm also gonna give you a few more. We're gonna actually talk about 20 firmware updates I would like to see implemented in the EOS R5 firmware pack whenever that comes out, hopefully sometime soon, because there are a couple things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the firmware updates I would like to see on the photo side firmware updates I'd like to see on the video side, and then the firmware updates that the Canon Rumors website listed. So that's the order of things, that's what we're gonna do. And I encourage you to leave your opinions down below in the comments, let me know what you think. Do you like these firmware updates? Do you not like these firmware updates? What do you want to see in the EOS R5 if I don't mention it? And uh, let's, let's have a little discussion down there, let me know what you think because this is a pretty awesome camera and with firmware updates it's gotten significantly better since it, it was when we first got it, but uh, it's still, could use a few more improvements. All right, so number one. All right, so there's one thing in the EOS R5 menu that's been driving me crazy since the day I got it, and that's the, the set shutter speed range. So you can go in the menu and you can set the shutter speed so it never drops below, let's say, for shooting weddings, I like to set it to 1 25th of a second so the shutter will never drop below 1 25th so I can't accidentally move the wheel or set it to anything lower than 1 25th. And that's great, but the Canon menu system is designed so that there's a certain set of menu options and, and um, custom modes for video and a certain set of custom modes for photo. But for whatever reason, the set shutter speed range crosses over on both sides. So if I set it to minimum of 125th of a second for shooting photos at a wedding and I wanna shoot video, now all of a sudden I can't shoot at 50 frames a second if I wanna shoot at 24p because I have to go into set shutter speed range and then drop it down to 24 or drop it down to 50. But if I leave it at 50 when I shoot photos, I can accidentally switch my shutter speed to 50th and I get really blurry shots. So I'd like to see the set shutter speed range separate for photo and separate for video. That's super handy because that's one of those things that's just been annoying me like crazy. And the next firmware update was suggested actually by a subscriber and what he suggested was that the set shutter speed range should be relative to the lens you put on your camera. Because obviously if you're shooting with, let's say an 800 millimeter, <laughs> you want your shutter speed to be a lot higher than 1 25th of a second. So because all these lenses are electronic and they communicate with the camera, he suggested that, hey, if you put, let's say, a longer lens on your camera, the camera recognizes the lens and it can go into its memory banks or whatever and adjust the, the shutter speed range specifically for that lens. So if you put a long telephoto on your lens, you don't have to worry about resetting it. Or if you, let's say, you go to a wide angle, 16 millimeter, you can drop your shutter speed even lower to maximize on the amount of light you can get in. Throwery. So you can maximize on the amount of light you can get in. And I thought that was a really cool idea because these cameras are like mini computers and they do know what lens is on the front. So why not have custom settings for each lens? All right, so here's something I'd really like to see and that's autofocus snap to grid. So you have that three by three grid or nine by nine grid. There's different grids on the EOS R5. And what I would like to see is when you hit the joystick to move the focus point, it just snaps to one of the intersections on the grid. So for example, if you're shooting with the rule of thirds, focus point will snap to one of the points. So there's four points you could snap to and if you push the joystick straight down, it'll just snap right to center point focus. So for me personally, I like to shoot with the rule of thirds and I use that for composition. And it would just be cool if the focus point just snapped to one of the points and that was it, super simple. And of course, if you're using a different grid, it'll snap to different focus points. The next firmware update I wanna see is an improvement on something that's already pretty awesome. And that's the fact that the the shutter speed comes down when you turn off the camera. Now that's perfect, I love that. Thank you Canon for that, I really appreciate it, especially when shooting weddings, turn off the camera, shutter speed comes down, you don't have to worry about dust getting on the sensor. But what I would like to see that, or how I would like to see that improved is I want it to come down faster. When I hit the off button, you have to wait one, two seconds, and then it closes. And when you're shooting a wedding and you're trying to switch lenses fast and you need speed, that's way too slow. You go to your camera bag, you turn off your lens camera, and then you have to wait to hear the click and then you change lenses. It'd be nice if like, as soon as you hit the off button, the shutter came down right away and it was instantaneous. Now let's talk about zebras in photo mode. Now when you're in video mode, you can set your zebra. Zebras are these like lines, black and white lines that show you what's overexposed. So if your window light's overexposed, the lighting on your model's face, so on and so forth, zebra lines will show up to let you know that that area is overexposed. Now I'd like to see that technology migrate over to the photo side. So if you're shooting photos and your sky's overexposed, your model's face, et cetera, et cetera, just put little zebra lines on that area so that we can adjust our exposure accordingly in photo mode. That would be super handy. 
Okay, shutter button tap to zoom out. Now this is something that's been bugging me so much with the Canon menu system. I like to shoot with vintage lenses and manual focus lenses, and this is something that's probably annoyed everyone who uses Canon and shoots with manual focus lenses. So when you have the lens on the front of your camera and you wanna zoom in for critical focus, you hit the magnifying glass, camera zooms in, right? The display zooms in, you, you align your focus, you get everything good, then you have to double tap the zoom button or the magnifying glass button to get back out and then hit the shutter button to take your shot. And it just, it doesn't make any sense because things move and shake and especially if you're shooting with like a, this is a 1.5 lens, you could lose critical focus. So what I would like to see is that if you zoom in and you get critical focus to zoom back out, all you have to do is tap the shutter button and then push it down all the way to take the shot. It would make it so much better. Like just, just tap the shutter button to zoom out. That would be a huge, huge, huge bonus to anybody who shoots with manual focus lenses. All right, so here's a firmware update suggested from one of my subscribers, and they suggested that it would be nice if Canon had some sort of sound you can turn on when shooting in electronic shutter mode, so you know that you're actually taking a photo. I, I know as like a wedding photographer, everything's always silent because you, you don't want to disturb the scene, you don't want to disturb anything, but there's certain times when it's louder and you just don't even know if you're shooting, because when it's silent, you can hear the little right? But if there's people talking around you and it's louder, you don't hear anything. So maybe that would be a good suggestion or maybe a good firmware update if you can somehow put sounds in there. And you know what would be really cool if Canon, if you want to take it to the next level, allow us to upload our own sounds to the camera so when we take a picture, it plays the sound we want to give us some more customizability. That would be kind of interesting, right? All right, so those are the updates I want to see on the photo side of the camera. Let's move on to the video side and then we'll talk about the Canon Rumors firmware updates. All right, first one on the video side, and this is a big one. We've all been talking about this for a long time. As videographers, as video shooters, we would like to see the histogram stay on the LCD display when we're recording video. Because you can see the histogram, everything's fine when you're composing your shot, and then as soon as you hit record, it disappears. And sometimes when you're shooting with log formats, for example, you wanna see that histogram because it's, it's valuable information. You wanna know if you're clipping, you're blowing out because everything's washed out gray. So histogram while recording would be nice, Canon. All right, screen rotation. Now here's the thing. Short form content is here to stay. There's nothing we can do about it. Love it or hate it, it's here, right? So a lot of us are shooting TikTok content, Instagram content, YouTube shorts. And the problem with the Canon cameras is when you're shooting in vertical mode and the screen is flipped up and you wanna watch your footage, it's upside down. So it would be nice to have some kind of menu setting which would allow us to flip those around. So when the camera's in vertical mode, either just have the top left side is the top or the right side is the top. So it'd be nice to be able to change that in the menu settings. Another nice thing I would love to see is a red outline tally light type thing on the screen when we're recording. So right now I'm looking at the LCD screen on the side of the Canon and I just see the red record button, which is cool, but it'd be nice to have like a red box, maybe two, three pixels thick all around. So when it's solid red box around everything, I know it's recording and there's no confusion. All right, so now I wanna talk about one of the things that I find so frustrating as someone who shoots video with the EOS R5, and that's the playback volume. The speakers are so low. I have them set to full volume on playback, and when I hit playback, it's like, I can barely hear what I just recorded, and that's so frustrating. I don't know if there's a way that you can, in firmware, give a little more juice to those speakers to increase the volume at which it plays back so we can actually hear the content that we just recorded without having to plug in headphones or, or speakers or something like that. So that would be nice. Now I wanna see another firmware update to the video Kodak format section. Now Canon did a great job designing this because you pick your Kodak, you pick your size, you pick your frame rate and it's all right there. And then anything that isn't available is grayed out. So you can just pick stuff and it's, it's just a beautiful system. Now. I would like to see that system improved and I wanna see it improved by an addition to high frame rate. So why isn't 120 frames in this layout? You know, why isn't log an option as a format here? That would be so good. And what's the other one I put in here? It'd be nice to see HQ. So 4K HQ, 120 frames per second, log, and then the formats that are available. It would be nice if the whole video menu was right there. And let's say you wanted to adjust your log, then hit the info button and then the, the log menu will pop up and you can pick which log you want and all those other settings. But it would be nice if all the basic functions were right there, all the basic video settings were in one spot. So you can just click what you want and if you wanna change it, 
you know, pick the next one. And uh, yeah, that would be super helpful because then you don't have to go out of that menu and then into the log menu and then click this and then it's just, it's just too complicated. Let's simplify, let's simplify. All right, so now let's talk about the firmware rumors that were published on the Canon Rumors website. So this is exciting. These are probably gonna happen. The ones I talked about probably won't, but you never know, fingers crossed. Um, okay, so number one, unlimited recording, no more 30 minute record limit. Fantastic, fantastic. I've been wanting this for so long. Now that the overheating stuff has been mostly dealt with with the R5, it'd be nice to have longer record times. I'm tired of having to monitor the little screen to find out how many minutes I have left. So. Yeah, at least an hour. If, if, it's, if, it's, if it ha can't go like unlimited recording, at least an hour would be good, but unlimited recording would be awesome. Lens breathing correction is one of the firmware updates being added to the R5. Now, me personally, eh, it doesn't really matter because if you're recording video and you wanna get rid of the, the lens breathing motion, you can just zoom in, punch in on your video and you cut it out. So you can do that in post, no problem, but I guess having that option in camera is good, but you are gonna, it's gonna crop into your footage a little bit, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, next up, pre-shooting buffer. So when you are about to push the button, the camera starts taking photos before you take the photo, so you get some pre-shots before you take your shots. I don't understand the name of pre-shooting buffer, it's just pre-shooting. The buffer is always pre-prep before you push the, anyway, that's a debate for another time. So pre-shooting, that's one of those things I've heard a lot of people talking about and they want it in the R5, so that's awesome, that's coming. Next, we have improved autofocus. So I think the algorithm is being updated to recognize different types of vehicles and more animals. So you're gonna get, I don't know, I guess, planes or bikes, cars, different types of animals, maybe bugs. I know Sony has like bug recognition, so that's cool. Maybe that's coming to Canon as well. So more AI focus options. So that's, that's great. And um, this is the big one. This is the really big one. So for landscape photographers and other people who want incredible detail shots, there is a rumor that pixel shift is coming to the EOS R5. So basically because the sensor is moving around with IBIS, the sensor will move here, take a shot, move here, take a shot, move here, take a shot. Move. It'll move in different places and take shots and then it'll stitch all those shots together and you will probably get a million megapixel image that will explode your computer if you try to load it on there. But yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So the only catch with that technology is that you have to be perfectly still and your subject matter has to be perfectly still because if they're moving, then depending, depending on the AI though, because Sony just came out with an enhanced kind of pixel shift technology and it recognizes objects that are moving and it'll only pick one instance of that object instead of two or three. So. That's kind of cool, maybe Canon did that, maybe they didn't. I guess we'll find out when the firmware launches. All right, so this video is over, thanks for watching. Let me know down below in the comments if you like these firmware updates, you don't like these firmware updates, is there something else you'd like to see? Let me know and we can talk about it there. With that being said, this video is over. Peace out, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. All right, see you guys in the next video.